the Kraft Food Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Food Company. Kraft makers of Velveeta, the famous pasteurized processed cheese food that tastes so good and is so good for you. Yes, Velveeta is another of the Kraft family of fine foods. Foods you can depend on for delicious eating, for wholesome, healthy eating. So remember, to get the cheese food of quality, get Velveeta, the cheese food that's made by Kraft. It's Friday afternoon in Summerfield. School is out, and the great Gildersleeve's nephew, Leroy, is heading for home. But he isn't exactly burning up the sidewalk. He seems to be puzzled about something. He walks a few steps. Then he stops. There's something going on. He walks a little further. And then he stops. I can tell when I was trying to pull something. I can see through him like a book. Now, as he walks on, his nose lifts to the wind. Like a beagle, he catches a scent. And there he goes. Up the walk. Down the driveway. Up the back steps. Through the back door. Hi, Bertie. Making donuts? Where'd you come from? School, where are the donuts? On the table cooling, but them belong to Miss Marjorie. Oh, boy. Leroy, you stay away. Those are for the Girl Scouts. Okay, I'm a Girl Scout. <laughs> Get your hands off that. Okay, okay. Hey, have you and Bertie noticed anything funny about Uncle Mort lately? What do you mean? Well, he's been acting awful funny, hasn't he, Bertie? He ain't been acting no funnier than usual. He has to me. I noticed this morning when I came downstairs. Get away from the donut. What? Oh, gee, my hands just drifted that way. <laughs> Must be magnetism. Well, this morning when we were eating breakfast, he had a kind of a look on his face. Kind of smiling. Especially when we were talking about next week. I didn't notice any look. Well, kind of like the cat that ate the canary. I'll bet you anything he'd try to pull a fast one on somebody. Get away from those donuts. I was just waving my arm. Well, wave it the other way. You're making this silly talk about Uncle Mort just so you can snitch something. I am not. Something's fishy. And it's something to do with me. Leroy, your uncle wouldn't put nothing over on you. Nobody's going to try. How do you know? I met him on the way home from school. And he took me to Peavy's drugstore and bought me a soda. And I didn't even ask him. <laughs> Hurry up, Judge. Answer the door. Pokey old goat. Who's there? Don't glare at me through that peephole, Judge. Is that you, Gilder? Do I look like Eisenhower? <laughs> Let me in. Come in, Gilder. I couldn't tell who it was at first. You had the end of your cigar in the peephole. <laughs> All right, Judge. I thought at first the front porch was on fire. I can't stay, Judge. I'm on my way home. Stopped in to see if I could borrow your big suitcase. You know, the one with the Palm Beach stickers on it? Oh, certainly. Now, where is that big suitcase? Do you have it? If I had it, I wouldn't be here to borrow it. Oh, that's right. I recall now I loaned it to Miss Matterhorn last June when she drove to Duluth. But I can get it for you, Gilda. Oh, that's fine, Judge. Can I have it soon? I'll bring it by first thing in the morning. Where are you going? Well, keep this under your hat. But I'm going to a water commissioner's meeting in Omaha, taking the train. Why is it under the hat? Is it illegal? <laughs> it's because of Leroy, Judge. Every year when I make this trip, he pesters me to go along. Last April, the meeting was in Sheboygan. The only place in the world he wanted to go was Sheboygan. Pestered me night and day. Right, George, I'm not going through it again this year. How can you help it? 
He's bound to find out you're going. No, he won't. You're the only one who knows where I'm going. And I'll do my packing in the garage, and I'll sneak out. Send him a wire after I'm on the train. Well, I hope it works. Leroy is pretty sharp. Well, I'm sharper. And I'm going to fool him this time. Nobody knows I'm going but you and me. If you don't spill the beans, he can't find out. Don't you worry about me. There's no holes in this bean bag. <laughs> Fine. See you in the morning, Judge. Say, it's after 9 o'clock, Leroy. How does it happen you're staying home on Friday night? Well, when you said you were going to stay home tonight, Unc, I decided I'd stay home, too. I'm happy when I'm with you. Well, I'm flattered. Yeah. Marjorie, what about you, my dear? Oh, Bronco's working, and I have all these boxes to wrap for the Girl Scouts. I made donuts. I tried one. It's the Girl Scouts' 40th birthday. If they eat them, it'll be their last. <laughs> oh, and they're doing wonderful work, Unky. In these times, we really need them. That's very true, indeed. Well, what's new, Unk? What's new? Yeah. Any new stuff come up or anything like that? Oh. Oh, no. Nothing at all, my boy. Uh, excuse me, Uncle Mort. Uh, Bertie, have you seen that ribbon? I've been thinking, Unc. Ours has been a beautiful friendship. Friendship? Yeah. I don't know why, but I trust you. You don't say. We're not just men. We're buddies. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, now, I mean, if I knew something, I'd tell you right away. What do you know? Well, uh, <laughs> nothing right now, but if I should, I'd tell you. Well, that's the way to do. Anything at all that I knew, I'd tell you. Well, good. Where's the inside section of the paper? Anything at all. You're sitting on it. <laughs> oh, yes. I guess it must be pretty keen having a nephew like me. What's this? A buddy you can tell stuff to. Leroy, what kind of stuff are you hitting? Oh, all kinds. I'll listen to anything. <laughs> well, I appreciate your companionship, my boy. But there's a big difference between being a patient listener and being just plain nosy. And you're nosy. Unc, I'm just interested in you. Leroy, I know what you're trying to find out. You're wasting your time, and you know it. How do I know it? I don't even know what I'm trying to find out. <laughs> well, you're not going to know either. This is one time when your old uncle is going to keep something strictly to himself. Keep what to yourself? What I'm keeping. What you going to do, huh? I'm going to take a little nap in the couch. Okay. I think I'll get something to eat. Hi, Bertie. What you doing? Well, if this kitchen was a boat and this iron board was a rail, I'd be sailing to Honolulu. But the way it is, I'm just pressing your uncle's pay. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I heard you in there pying away at your uncle. Did you fry up anything? Nah, he's got something cooking, though. And it's something to do with me. How do you know? I can smell it. This is frustrating. Didn't he give you a hint? Nothing. Well, I was reading in the digest there about how some folks will talk in their sleep. Now, if you can't get anything out of him when he's awake, well, you ought to try him when he's snoozing. Nah. All he says when he's asleep is reeble deeble and watch you for. Well, I don't know. Here's the article right here, and it says, Button your lip on the pillow slip. Hmm. Let me see here. Mm -hmm. It has been found that certain people, if spoken to while asleep, will reply and often answer questions without awakening. Hey, I wonder if that would work with Unc. Now, don't ask me, and I didn't put you up to nothing. I just mentioned it. That's all. I just mentioned it. Gee, I wonder. Now, Leroy, don't you get me in no cahoots. we got to try it. We don't have to try nothing. Don't you get me in no cahoots. What are you scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. Don't you get me in no cahoots. <laughs> well, I'm going in and see if he's asleep. Yeah, he's rolling. Oh, brother, 
Well, let's tell that. <laughs> what a sawmill. How can I talk to him with all that racket? Hey, young. This could be a pretty dull conversation. <laughs> Hey, Uncle. Uncle Mort, you're planning something and you aren't telling anybody. You're not telling anybody. Hey, I got a spark out of him. <laughs> what are you going to do, Uncle Mort? It's your best. You want to say anything to Leroy? Leroy is a bum. No, he isn't. He's my nephew. He's nosy. I am not. Yes, he is too. What are you going to do, Uncle Morris? She's taking the train to the water commission's meeting. Omaha. Oh, going to Omaha? Please. Hey, up, wake up, wake up, huh? Huh? What's your you what's this? Wake up, huh? Eh? Leroy? Eh? Who are What's the matter? Uh, can I go to Omaha with you? You what? <laughs> can I go to Omaha with you? I've never been to Omaha. Can I go? Leroy, who told you I was going to Omaha? Oh, Bert. Bert? Whoosh. He must have been Judge Hooker. He was the only one who knew. Wait till I get my hands in that gabby old goat. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Need an idea for a tempting, satisfying Lenten main dish? Then how about a pinwheel vegetable casserole? You make it with carrots, onions, green beans, peas, and a wonderful Velveeta cream sauce, and you top the Velveeta vegetable mixture with biscuit pinwheels. Mmm. Now, you'll find the exact recipe for this pinwheel vegetable casserole, along with recipes for eight other hearty, delicious Lenten main dishes, in a handy folder packed right in the two-pound box of Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food. So when you buy Velveeta, and remember, I mean the two-pound loaf, just lift out the golden cheese food, and under it you'll find the folder of nine wonderful main dish recipes. Every one of them sure to be delicious, because... Velveeta has such a marvelous, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And you can be sure the main dishes you make with Velveeta will be nourishing, too, because Velveeta is rich in high-quality, complete protein, as well as other important food values from milk. What's more, Velveeta is the cheese food every member of the family can enjoy because it's digestible as milk itself. Stop at your grocer's tomorrow and take home a two-pound loaf of Velveeta. Just be sure you see the name Velveeta on the package you buy. Remember, Velveeta is the cheese food of top quality, and it's made only by Kraft. Well, the new day has dawned on the home of the great Gildersleeve. But the secret of the water commissioner's trip to Omaha is no longer a secret. The cat is out of the bag. Unc, where are you, Unc? I am here, Katie. Can I go with you to Omaha? No. I won't get in the way, Unc. No. I'll save you money. I'll wear short pants and go for half fare. No. I'll get in the truck and ride in the baggage car. No. Miss Jackie, that hooker's out there. Yeah, that hooker, I want to talk to him. Feather-brained old blabbermouth. He didn't tell me. Leroy, don't stand there and fib to me. He's the only one who knew I was going. Miss Gildersleeve. You're all right, Bertie. Just look at that I heard you, Bertie. You heard me? Yes. Can I go, Unc? No. Well, I'm getting yes or no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this family. Out of the way, Leroy. You got shaving cream on your face. I know it. My George, life is a losing battle. Just look at Sam out on the floor. For some reason, he don't want to come in. He probably wants room to run. <laughs> He'll need it. What's the matter? What happened? 
Judge. Morning, Gilda. I brought the big suitcase over. I didn't want to bring it in the house. Leroy might ask questions. Don't try to pull the wool over my eyes. What's happened to your face? Did you sit too close to the television and somebody hit you with a pie? <laughs> this is shaving cream and quit changing the subject. What's the idea of telling Leroy I was going to Omaha? Who told him? You did. I did not. Judge, don't point your chin whiskers at me. You did and you know it. Don't you shake your fat finger under my nose, you overblown water merchant. I'll show you. Oh, stand back. You're blowing shaving cream on my glasses. Judge, tell me the truth. Did you spill the beans to Leroy? I did not. I haven't seen Leroy. Well, then who did it? You're the only one who knew. There's nobody else. That's a mystery to me. Maybe he just took a guess at it. He couldn't have. Well, it's beyond me. I brought the suitcase over. It's in your garage. Thanks, Judge. I guess you're a good friend after all. But if you were the only one... I'm not going through that again. Have a nice time in Omaha. Goodbye, Judge. You're all right, Bertie. Hey, Aunt. Oh, here it goes again. Look, I got a map and I found Omaha. Could I have my breakfast? Sure, you eat and I'll tell you some keen stuff. I can't eat with that map on the table. You've got Montreal in my oatmeal. <laughs> okay. I don't want to hear any more about the trip. We're not going to mention it again. Okay. Who told you I was going? We're not talking about it anymore. <laughs> Leroy, don't be stubborn. Good morning, Auntie. Leroy. Marjorie. Right, George, that's the answer. The judge told you I was going on a trip, didn't he? What trip? The one we're not talking about. <laughs> Auntie, I haven't seen Judge Hooker for a week. Are we talking about it again? Of course we're talking about it. Can I go, Aunt? Leroy, I told What's you... What's this all about? I must have missed something. I'm going to Omaha on a train, and maybe I can go with him. Maybe, Aunt? I didn't say maybe. Okay, perhaps. No. Okay, but there's a chance. No! Uncle, you're shouting. Well, I have to shout to get the idea across to your brother. He's been pestering and teasing and heckling since last night. He hasn't stopped once. That's why I didn't want him to know I was going. If I ever find the knucklehead who told him. I'm sorry, Unc. Well, let's forget it. We'll let bygones be bygones. Who did tell you, Leroy? Sure. Just for fun, who was it? Oh, let's let bygones be bygones. <laughs> All right, all right. What's the matter, Unky? Nothing. Just eat. Everybody eat. I'm perfectly all right. Unk. Doesn't matter to me one way or the other. Not a bit. Unk. Yes. You're spreading jam on your napkin. <laughs> for you this morning. Phoebe, the first thing you can do for me is answer a question. Yeah, there's no charge for information. Did Judge Hooker tell you I was going to Omaha? No, but I recall that he did tell me you were going to Chicago. Chicago? When was this? Mm, back in 1932, I believe. Phoebe, <laughs> I'm talking about now, yesterday, last night. Hmm, that covers quite a bit of time. Phoebe, stop beating around the bush. You well, quit chasing me. <laughs> Have you talked to the judge since yesterday? Let's see, have I? Don't ask me, I'm asking you. No, I don't believe I have. Well, confound it, Phoebe. Somebody told Leroy I was going to Omaha. Somebody had to tell him. All right, what about it? What about it? Nobody did. That's what about it. The boy isn't a magician. How'd he find out? Don't ask me. <laughs> Driving me crazy. How would you feel if you saw something happen that you couldn't explain? What would you do if your soda fountain suddenly rose up in the air and floated around the room? I'd call the plumber. <laughs> I probably would. Well, I'm not licked yet. I'll get to the bottom of this if it kills me. that bag? I'm packing some stuff. Where do you think you're going? I'm going 
going with us to Omaha. What do you mean? You heard what your uncle said at breakfast. Just give me time. I'm not licked yet. I haven't even started. That's you, Aunt? Yeah, it's me. Here, Bertie, take the bag. Duck it in the kitchen. There you go. Get me into cahoots again. I don't know why Mrs. Gilsey got to go to Omaha anyhow. Hi, Unc. Leroy, don't start anything. I'm not starting anything. Well, don't. I just said hi. And don't grin at me either. You're not as smart as you think you are, you know. I know it. Now, I'll find out where you got that information. I have ways, you know. Sure you will. This may seem like a very clever trick to you. It's very simple to me. I have a few brains, too. Oh, I know. You're one of the smartest men I know. You've lived longer than I have. Well, just don't forget it. You've done a lot of things and been a lot of places and seen a lot of things that I've never seen. I'm just a little kid. I've never been anywhere. Well, you have your chance. It's tough, Unc, being a kid. Everybody else gets to do things and, and go places. No, Leroy. Other people have money. They can do things. A little kid doesn't have any money. He has to sit and wait for somebody to take him. Don't start that again. I sit here at home day after day. Lonely. You're away at the office. I have nobody to talk to. You do, too. Just women. I want to be with you, Unc. I miss you when you're away. I sit all alone and look at your picture. <laughs> Leroy. I'm wasting the most beautiful years of my life. I won't be a little boy very long. I'll be grown up and gone away. There's lots of time. This is when I need you, Unc. When we should be together. Taking trips. <laughs> <For> Omaha. <laughs> What an act. <laughs> Leroy, I'll make a deal with you. You will? Can I go? Not so fast. You were pretty slick finding out I was going on this trip. Well, if you can find out when I'm leaving, I'll take you along. No kidding. No kidding. And I'll tell you right now, it isn't going to be easy because you have no Judge Hooker or anybody else. I haven't told anybody I'm going. Yeah, I guess I'm out of luck. Now, let it be a lesson to you, boy. Hiding things from your old uncle... Crying secrets from my friends. Bound to catch up with you in the long run. Yeah, you're always so right about everything, Uncle. <laughs> well, I'm right about most things. Unc, you look kind of tired. <laughs> Me? I just got up. Your eyes look kind of heavy. Maybe you didn't sleep very well last night. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I didn't. After you woke me up. Why don't you stretch out on the couch, John? <clears throat> sure looks comfortable, doesn't it? Leroy, stop pushing. Well, I want you to protect your health. You're the only uncle I have. <coughs> well, nice of you to take such an interest, my boy. <laughs> the couch does feel good. Sure. Don't feel too badly about not going to Omaha with me, Leroy. You'll have your chance. Sure. Maybe real soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uncle Mort, when are you going to Omaha? 
You're just, just leaving on the 8.15 tonight. <laughs> 8.15? Be, be right. be, what's that racket? Just me, sing. Yeah, yeah, be a little more quiet. By the way, Elk, you better be getting ready if we're leaving on the 8.15 tonight. Yeah, I suppose it's... What? Be right. That's my bag, Bernie. Here we go. Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Any between-meal appetites at your house? Then make it a point to keep stock with Velveeta, Kraft's golden pasteurized processed cheese food. Velveeta is not only a wonderful helper for hot main dishes, it's a perfect snack food, too. It's delicious with a fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor, and it's wholesome. What's more, Vel- Velveeta is digestible as milk itself, so it's perfect any time for anyone. Get it tomorrow. Velveeta, made by Kraft. Good night, Aunt. Good night, my boy. Yeah, wonderful the way a kid takes to a train. You wish I could be that comfortable in an upper berth. <laughs> Do a little reading. Yeah, darn little upper berth is pretty tight. You wonder how Leroy figured out when I was leaving? Yeah, it's amazing. Hmm. Digest magazine. <laughs> you wonder if there's anything worth reading in here. <laughs> hmm. Button your lip on the pillow slip. Hmm. People answer questions in their sleep. Say, silly. But I wonder if that would work on Leroy. Leroy, are you awake? <laughs> He's asleep. Get this dying ladder over. Curtains. Leroy? Leroy? How did you know I was going on this trip? How did you find out when I was going? Go back to bed, huh? Good night. <laughs> oh, what for you? Good night, folks. Sleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight. A big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Craft mustard, naturally. There are two kinds of craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy craft mustard with horseradish added. If you like it nippy, get both kinds of Kraft prepared mustard at your food store. Next, Groucho Marx presents You Bet Your Life.
on NBC.